When Sergevich heard a strange cry coming from a gravestone, he grabbed his shovel, then his hands dropped the moment he saw it. He was looking at something he had longed for all his life, but how could she be in a place like this? While some women just want to get married and be the best mother in the world, Yevdokia was afraid of that commitment. She didn't want children. Although her husband Sergevich wanted to start a family, he put his wife first and buried his desire to have a child. Since children were not a priority, this couple spent more time traveling the world. Each time they made their trips, they stayed for months in cities, even living there for a year or two before returning home. Within a few years, they had enough fun. Their adventurous lifestyle continued like this for a decade, and to tell the truth, they enjoyed each other's company to the fullest. However, when Sergevich turned 35, he could no longer go on. The only thing that could make him happy was having children, so with a heavy heart, he spoke to his wife. All these years I have put you first. Can you do something for me too? Would you have my children? At her words, she shuddered. Then after a few seconds, she said yes with an affirmative shake of her head. Sergevich felt elated and suggested she undergo a medical checkup, then vowed to do anything to make her happy, even if it meant giving her the world. When they arrived at the hospital, Sergevich got tested first, then waited outside for Yevdokia, who had a checkup. Looking up a few minutes later, he saw his wife in tears, walking towards him with a yellow folder. When she got to where he was, she threw herself into his arms and said, You're free to go. I shouldn't do this to you. Sergevich was very worried, so he asked her what the problem was. The test results, she said. You see, the tests showed that I would not be able to give you a baby, ever. As soon as she finished talking, she broke the embrace, but he hugged her and said, I still love you. Let it go. We don't need them. Then he reassured her with a kiss on the forehead, but deep down, he was heartbroken. He wished he had children. Since then, they never took up this conversation again. The duo continued to live their lives. A few years later, when Yevdokia was a few years away from retirement, she became very ill, so she went to the hospital with her husband. There, the doctors gave her devastating news. Tests showed that she had sarcoma cancer and was in the last stage. They had arrived at the hospital too late. Her life was hanging on a cut string. A few weeks later, she passed away. Yevdokia's death, which affected Sergevich very much, he felt as if he was stuck in the middle of the deep sea with no one by his side, so he spent all his time going through his photos and possessions. A few months later, Sergevich was going through his late wife's belongings as usual, but unlike other times, this time his eyes caught something strange. It was the yellow folder she held years ago in the hospital. He had never wondered about its contents, but now curiosity got the better of him, and he opened the file. As he read it, his temperature suddenly shot up. He couldn't believe what he had just read. According to the result, it was not Yevdokia who was sterile. It was him. The realization was so shocking, and for a while the sweat did not stop dripping down his neck. He was enraged. He felt that he had married a stranger and that he had been cheated all his life. How could she hide something like that from me? What a liar, what an actress, he thought. But when all these fierce emotions faded away, calm ensued. He realized that his wife had sacrificed everything for him. However, he regrets one thing. I wish I had known earlier. At least they could have found other solutions for me, maybe adoption or artificial insemination. Maybe she hid the truth because she didn't want to have children, thought Sergevich. He knew it was pure selfishness, but he forgave his wife anyway. Since then, he went to her grave and spent hours talking to her. He felt it so real that he believed she was by his side every time they talked. One day, he took another walk through the cemetery. As he passed each grave, he read the names, wondering what they would have been like. Then one tombstone caught his eye. He hadn't seen it before, but there was something that didn't fit. The grave had no flowers or even letters on it. If the owner had died, shouldn't her relatives send lots of notes and roses to her grave? But there were even more strange details. The grave had no date on it. It only had Claudia's name written on it with a pencil. Hello, Claudia. 
I wonder who you are and how old you are, thought Sergevich as he prepared to walk away. At that moment, he heard a creaking sound, confused. He turned but saw nothing. Then the sound must have come from this tombstone, he thought. Luckily, he found a shovel beside the grave, but he wasn't sure if he should dig or not. As he contemplated it, the creaking sound grew louder. Unable to contain himself, he picked up the shovel and began to dig, determined to find out what was making the noise. As he dug, the squeaking became louder and louder. As he got closer to the ground, the sound became very audible, and sure enough, it wasn't a rat or a squirrel, it was a baby's voice. Realizing this, Sergevich's hands began to tremble. Who would bury a child alive? After a few minutes, he pulled out the coffin, threw back the lid, and what he found in front of him was horrible. Inside the coffin was an old woman whom Sergevich guessed to be Claudia. Lying on either side of her body were two babies, a boy and a girl. The boy was in a terrible state and barely breathing while the girl was crying. Wasting no time, Sergevich removed the babies and reported the case to the police. The children were taken to a temporary shelter. After investigating, the police learned that the dead woman's name was Claudia. This is what they also found in connection with the case. Let's start with a little backstory. After Claudia's daughter died during childbirth, she had to raise her granddaughter, Milana, by herself. Although she did her best to instill the proper values in her, the child was capricious and ignored her. When Milana reached adolescence, she began dating men and became pregnant. Although Claudia was old and her health failed her, she promised to take care of the unborn child. It was a promise she could not keep. The old woman soon became ill and was taken to the hospital. A few months later, she died. That same day, Milana's water broke at home and she gave birth to twins on her own. However, she knew she couldn't take care of the babies, so she came up with a plan to get rid of them. Before burying Claudia, Milana put the babies in the coffin to be buried as well. That same day, she ran away. Hearing this, Sergovich was dumbfounded. He could not forget the moment he took the babies out of the coffin, but he could do nothing but visit the twins regularly. Well, he thought so. One day when Sergovich visited the foster home, a nurse said to him, I see how much you love those children. Why don't you take them away? It was what he wanted, but he wasn't sure it would work. But the nurse assured him. After a review, Sergovich was deemed fit to adopt the children and took custody of them, promising to love them forever. From then on, he put away his sorrows and regrets. Had the doctors been wrong about his fertility, or was it a ploy by Yevdokia? Well, none of that mattered anymore. He now had two beautiful children. From then on, instead of going to the grave, this lucky man went to the playground. His wish came true. Although this story is fiction, situations like this happen all the time. Couples cheat on themselves, all for their selfish interests. Remember that true love doesn't lie, doesn't pretend, and never betrays. What do you think about Yevdokia hiding the result of the test? If you liked this story, leave a like and share it with your friends and family. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time.